This next PowerPoint picks up uh, Chapter 25, PowerPoint B, Female Reproductive System, and is going to focus on the anatomical uh, structures of the female reproductive system. So as we mentioned on prior PowerPoints, the uh, gonads, the female gonads, are going to be the ovaries. This is the organ that does two things. It produces the male gamete or sex cell, which is called the ova, and secretes the female hormone, sex hormones, which are estrogen and progesterone. Accessory dogs of the uh, female reproductive system will be the uterine tubes, the uterus, and the vagina. The female reproductive anatomy can be divided into the internal genitalia housed in the pelvic cavity and the external genitalia in the pubis. Uh, ovaries, uterine tubes, uterus, and vagina are part of the internal genitalia. And then we will talk about the uh, external sex organs in uh, subsequent PowerPoints. This is a view of the female pelvis. And you can actually see both the internal genitalia and some of the external genitalia. You can see uh, here the uterus, which is located uh, on top of the above the urinary bladder right there. This is the urethra right here. The neck of the uterus is called the cervix which you can see right here, and that's connected to the vaginal canal right there. Coming from either side of the uterus are the uterine tubes right there, which are close to the ovaries, which you can see them as these white organs right there. You can see one of them right there. Uh, external genitalia will consist of the labia, the labia majora, the labia minora, which we can see here, the clitoris, right there. Um, the ovaries are going to help be held in place attached to the uterus by the ovarian ligament and attached to the pelvic wall by the suspensory ligaments. There is a, a sheet of ligaments that are also going to connect the ovaries and the uterus to the pelvic cavity. These are called the broad ligaments. So from this picture, you can see the ovarian ligaments attaching the ovaries to the uterus. And you see a little bit of the suspensory ligament, which will attach the ovaries to the, uh, to the pelvic cavity. These bluish areas here and here and here are going to be the broad ligament the area of the broad ligament between the uh, uh, uterine tubes and the ovarian ligament. So this area right here is called the mesovarium. And the mesometrium will be the other below the area of the broad ligament. So you should know the ligaments that hold the ovaries uh, and the uterus to the pelvic cavity. The ovaries, uh, similar to the, um, to the testes, are going to be covered with connective tissue. The deepest of these connective tissues is going to be the tunica virginia. Remember, this is exactly the same name that we gave to the connective tissue surrounding the testes. The uh, cross-section of the, uh, of the uh, ovaries will give us the two regions of the ovaries. The outside region is called the cortex, which is where we find the ovarian follicles. And in the medulla, we're going to find the blood vessels and nerves. So you should be able to identify female gonads, uh, female sex hormones, and female gametes, and the ligaments that keep the ovaries and the uterus in place. Histology of the ovaries looks specifically at the ovarian cortex, where we find the uh, cells that will create the uh, ova and will secrete uh, the female sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. So at the cortex, 
of the ovaries, we find this cluster of cells called follicles. Follicles consist of um, a series of cells, one immature egg or oocyte, which is a large cell surrounded by smaller cells called follicle cells. And follicle cells will uh, uh, divide, produce more numerous cells. And when that happens, we call them granulosa cells. So here's a depiction of the ovarian cortex. And you can see a, quite a, a variety of structures at the surface of the ovaries. The um, most undeveloped of these structures are the primordial follicles. Primordial follicles appear during fetal development, and they consist of a, an oocyte, which will become a gamete. Um, it's called the primary oocyte, surrounded by one layer of flat follicular cells, squamous follicular cells, forming what's called the sona pellucida. So this right here is a nest of primordial follicles. A female baby will be born with hundreds of thousands of these primordial follicles. Um, after puberty, once a month, one of these primordial follicles will begin to develop to the, due to the actions of FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, which is the hormone one of the gonadotropic hormones secreted by the anterior pituitary. Notice that the name FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, is given by the action of the hormone in the female ovaries, not by the action of the hormone in the testes, which is to um, stimulate production of androgen um, uh, receptor uh, proteins. Uh, so follicle stimulating hormones will uh, develop the primordial follicles into primary follicles and it will continue with the development of the follicles. Um, a primary follicle now has the original primary oocyte, but now the follicular cells have grown into cuboidal or columnar cells. So now they're not so much of a squamous cells. Here's a primary follicle. FSH continues to develop the follicle into now an early secondary follicle, which is going to consist again of the primary oocyte plus what's called an antrum that begins to develop. And now it's two layers of follicular cells. These follicular cells are going to be secreting the female sex hormones estrogen and progesterone. And remember that the hormone that is causing the development of these follicles is FSH. A late secondary follicle is a large structure. You can see it right here. Uh, it, in this case, now we have again the primary oocyte uh, surrounded by a uh, antrum, which is a fluid-filled space, the uh, thecal cells and the granulosa cells are found surrounding the uh, follicle, and also a sona pellucida can now be visible. And the sona pellucida is a sticky area that surrounds the primary oocyte. The secondary follicle develops finally into what's called a mature follicle, tertiary follicle, or graphene follicle. Uh, these, these structure consists of now a secondary oocyte. Notice that the oocyte has now developed into a secondary oocyte. It is surrounded by a sona pellucida, which is the light area that we see surrounding the oocyte. Uh, it's also surrounding by the granulosa cells, which were previously follicular cells, and the thecal cells, which were also um, 
follicular cells. These mature follicle, tertiary follicle or graphene follicle will be the one that will begin to continue to grow. Notice the huge antrum uh, or fluid filled space that characterizes right here, this mature follicle. It pushes against the ovary, the cortex of the ovary, and eventually it is released or ovulated. So ovulation is the uh, happens when the oocyte within the follicle, this tertiary follicle, finishes meiosis one right before ovulation, becoming a secondary oocyte. And when the secondary oocyte is ovulated, it has the granulosa cells around them. And between the granulosa cells and the oocyte is the zona pellucida. What remains in the ovaries is going to be the corpus luteum, which is this layer of cells right here. The corpus luteus continues to secrete hormones, this, uh, estrogen and progesterone. And if fertilization of the oocyte does not happen, the corpus luteum will uh, degenerate into a non-hormone secreted secreting corpus albicans. So you should be able to uh, identify these stages in the development of the of the ovarian follicles. Remember that the last of these follicles is the vesicular tertiary or graphene follicle. This is the uh, large structure that has a fluid filled antrum that bulges and pushes the cortex of the ovary until ovulation happens. Ovulation is the ejection of the oocyte from the follicle. What is left behind in the ovaries is the corpus luteum, which continues to secrete hormones, estrogen and progesterone. The corpus luteus, in the absence of fertilization, will disintegrate into a corpus albicans. So you should be able to describe these follicles and distinguish, for example, primary from primordial follicles, secondary follicle, early and late, the mature follicle, and distinguish between corpus luteum and corpus albicans. Moving on with the female reproductive system, we're going to now look at the uh, female dog system which consists of the uterine or fallopian tubes, which are going to pick up the oocyte that is um, ovulated from the, uter from the ovaries and move it into the uterus. And if it's not uh, fertilized and implanted, it will, be, it will uh, uh, disintegrate and menses menstruation will occur. Uh, the vagina is the conduit where the that takes the spermatozoa into the uterus and eventually the fallopian or uterine tubes. So let's look at the uterine tubes first, which consist of um, three parts, the ampulla, the ciliated fimbria and the isthmus, and they are really not in any good order. Um, the ampulla, let's see, the isthmus first. The isthmus is this smaller constriction of the tube as it joins with the uterus. The ampulla will be the opposite, will be the enlargement of the tube close to the ovaries, and the fimbria are these finger-like projections that move and attract the ovulated oocyte to the, to the uh, uh, fallopian tubes, to the uterine tubes. Even though in these pictures, it looks like the ovaries and the uterine tubes are touching, in reality, they're not. There's a space between them. So the fimbria will move and will attract, uh, gather to itself, the ovulated uh, oocyte. The uh, uterus is this uh, pear-shaped organ 
that has a dome fundus, a body, and a neck called the cervix. Uh, from it comes out the uterine tubes uh, in the superior region, and the neck joins with the vagina in the inferior region. So the cervix is the neck of the uterus that projects into the vagina. The uh, cervical canal communicates with the uh, vagina through the external os and to the uterus with the internal os. Cervical glands secrete mucus that block sperm entry during the mid-cycle of the uterine uh, uh, cycle. Uh, the urine wall uh, the, uh, consists of three, la three layers, or the uterus really consists of three layer layers. The uterine wall is the middle layer, or the myometrium, that's the muscle layer. The uterus is uh, lined with epithelial tissue called the endometrium. The wall is the smooth muscle called the myometrium. And the most superficial layer is a serous layer, visceral peritoneum, uh, connective tissue. The endometrium, which is the lining of the uterus, consists of two sets of tissue layers. The stratum functionalis is the uh, closest to the lumen of the uterus. And this is the functional layer. This is the one that responds to ovarian hormones, estrogen, and progesterone. And this is the layer that is shed during menstruation. Uh, on top of the stratum functionalis is the stratum basalis of basal layer. And this is a layer of connective tissue that will build up the stratum functionalis after menstruation. The stratum basalis is unresponsive to the ovarian hormones, estrogen, and progesterone. So it is a stable layer that does not change. The blood vessels of the uterus consist of the straight arteries in the stratum basalis that reach into the stratum functionalis as the spiral arteries. Uh, these straight arteries are uh, a, a branch of the uterine arteries and the arterial arteries are going to feed the smooth muscle of the uterus. Um, right before menstruation, spasms of the spiral arteries in the stratum functionalis will lead to the shedding of the stratum functionalis if pregnancy doesn't happen. So here you have the, the uh, uh, uterine arteries, which lead to the arcuate arteries that are going to go to the muscle and also to the radial arteries and veins, going back uh, into the uh, circulation, and to the um, spiral arteries into the stratum function and veins. So this is the stratum functionalis, and this is the stratum basalis. So what will be shed during menstruation will be the stratum functionalis, there, right there. The vagina is the birth canal and the copulatory organ. It extends between the bladder and the rectum from the cervix all the way, or the neck of the uterus, all the way to the exterior. The urethra is embedded in the anterior wall, so it's anterior to the vagina. Uh, a mucous membrane near the vagina orifice forms a partition, incomplete partition, called the hymen, which is uh, typically destroyed during the first intercourse. At the vaginal vortex superior to the vagina is the connection between vagina and cervix. So this is the fornix right here, right there and right there, 
which constitutes a connection between the cervix and the vagina. So you should be able to name the parts of the uterine tube and their function. Name the parts of the uterus. Uh, the uterine horns are the areas of the uterus that connect with the uterine tubes. The tissue layer of the uterus, uh, the uh, uh, endometrium, the myometrium, and uh, the perimetrium. Um, endometriosis is a condition in which the endometrium grows into abnormal areas of the pelvic cavity. And because the endometrium is sensitive, or at least the functional layer of the endometrium is sensitive to sex hormones, during the menstrual cycle, these tissue layers that have migrated to parts of the pelvic where they shouldn't be um, also respond to estrogen and uh, progesterone, uh, causing painful um, episodes in the, uh, in the patient. Uh, you should be able to distinguish the stratum functionalis from the stratum basalis of the uterus and know which one is shed during menstruation. Uh, you should follow the path of the ovulated oocyte from the ovary to the ovarian uh, uh, tubes, uh, to, sorry, to the uterine tubes, and then to the uterus. Fertilization typically occurs in the ampulla of the uterine tubes. Implantation means that the fertilized egg uh, will uh, borrow itself into the endometrium of the uterus. Um, next, we're going to look at female external genitalia, which is also called the vulva or the pudendum. Uh, the mons pubis is a fatty area overlaying the pubic synthesis. Labia majora is the hair cover fatty skin folds covering the uh, external genitalia, covering the um, uh, vagina. Labia minora is skin folds laying within the labia majora. Uh, there are some uh, glands called the greater vestibular glands that are similar to the bulbo urethral glands in males that release mucus in, uh, into the vestibule for lubrication. Uh, the clitoris is the equivalent to the penis, the male penis. It is made of um, spongy tissue, so it is erectile tissue. Uh, it is, uh, uh, the exposed portion is called the glans clitoris. Uh, perineum is the diamond shaped region between the pubic arch and the coccyx. So there is the perineum. You can see the mont pubis right there. The uh, prepuce, the clitoris, uh, the uh, urethra, the vaginal canal, and down here is the anus. Accessory uh, reproductive organs of the female are the mammary glands, which uh, consist of a, a series of uh, structures called the uh, epithelial cells that are going to uh, secrete milk, the mammary uh, gland lobules. So these cells are organized into groups called lobules. And they will secrete the milk into a, a excretory duct that will uh, be drained into a milk duct that will enlarge, creating a sinus prior to being excreted out of the, uh, of the nipple. So the milk will go from the lactiferous duct to the lactiferous sinus to the opening uh, outside into the nipple. Breast cancer usually arises from epithelial cells of the small ducts in the mammary glands. 
Uh, risk factors include early onset of menstruation and late menopause. Uh, and part of the reason why is because a lot of these cancers are estrogen-based ca cancers. So an early menstruation and a late menopause will, uh, will expose the female to more estrogen. Uh, no pregnancies or the first pregnancy late in life also uh, is a risk factor for breast cancer. Family history of breast cancer. And there is a, a gene mutation in the breast cancer genes 1, BRAC1, and BRAC2 genes, um, which is responsible for about 10% of, uh, of, of uh, breast cancers. Having said this, most of the women who come down with breast cancer have no known risk factors. The uh, best way to deal with breast cancer is to detect it early via self-examination. Uh, treatment depends on the, how early the um, cancer is caught. And it typically involves radiation, chemotherapy, uh, and surgery. So you should be able at this point to describe the female external genitalia, uh, the, uh, the perineum and the structures within it, Differentiate between the lactiferous duct and the sinus, which are the enlargement of what milk uh, accumulates, and list the risk factors of breast cancer. Uh, we're going to pause the PowerPoint now, and the next PowerPoint will focus on uh, the oogenesis process.